Hello, my name is Karen and I work for the Eve Appeal, the UK's gynaecological cancer research charity. It is Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month and I've been making a series of videos with the wonderful Dr Ellie Cannon. Thank you. Here she is, she's still my friend. Uh, she's a GP and fantastic ambassador for the Eve Appeal. And the last video in this series is going to be about treatment and prognosis and survival of ovarian cancer patients. So, Ellie, if you were diagnosed with ovarian cancer, how treatable is it? So we always talk about um, cancer in different stages. Mm. You'll hear people talk about sort of something between stage one and stage four, and that's really sort of stages of severity. And so and there how are four stages in total. Generally, yeah. yes, where one is, a, is sort of a very contained cancer mm. as opposed to four, which is where people have got what's called secondary cancers. It's spread to other parts of the body. Mm. So we know that if women are diagnosed with ovarian cancer in stages one or two, when it's still considered early or earlier, then survival rates at five years, what we call a five-year survival rate, is over 90%. Mm. So that's great. It's ve that means it's very treatable at those stages. But, and as mm. you said, there's always a however, but... Many women are diagnosed, unfortunately, at stage three or stage four. Mm. And then at that point, the cancers are far less treatable in terms of a cure. So it is treatable and it can be very treatable. And that's why you and I and the Eve Appeal want people to be so aware of ovarian cancer symptoms mm. because those early diagnoses are really what save people's lives. So someone has written in with this question, will a diagnosis of ovarian cancer automatically mean loss of fertility? It wouldn't mean automatically mm. losing fertility, but it would more than likely have an effect. Yeah. Um, your ovaries are obviously um, where you make the eggs. Um, they are more often than not removed for um, ovarian cancer, um, but there are things that we can do freezing eggs beforehand and it's all to do with whether or not you're keeping your womb or not and it's mm. a very very complicated issue yeah. but it's a massive discussion for a woman who's diagnosed with ovarian cancer preserving their fertility and it would be automatically part of those initial discussions for treatment. Are there any trials for ovarian cancer treatment out there at the moment? Actually many many patients who have cancer, all sorts of cancer, mm. not just ovarian, who are having treatment in the UK right now will be on a trial. Really? Yes. Yeah. So in a lot of oncology departments, people are on trials of treatment because cancer treatment is evolving mm. all the there's time. There's always something new, right? So there's always yeah. something new and there's always something being tested and what sort of combination of chemo people are having or sort of whether, you know, the chemo is done before the operation. So lots of sort of different, different things and sort of new types of treatment so more than likely if you are having treatment under an oncology department you could be involved in a trial um, the trials are accessible and open to anybody to sort of look at them on um, the Cancer Research UK website so the and information the, is kind of accessible the information yeah. is all there and it's all accessible Cancer trials have very, very specific criteria mm. because often they're really trying to define very, very closely, of course, what works in very certain situations. So you're not necessarily kind of eligible? You're not necessarily eligible. And also, um, with any trial for any sort of treatment, there's going to be the treatment arm of that trial and also the control arm where you'd be given the sort of the normal treatment. So even if you're on the trial, you might not be getting the sort of mm. treatment being trialled, if that makes sense. So they are there, they are open to people, I would say, have a look at that um, cancer research website and also discuss with your own oncologist. Mm. So it really is kind of an individual case-by-case -case basis. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Does every woman with ovarian cancer need to have chemotherapy? No, they mm. don't. So again, it's to do with at what stage you are you are sort of um, diagnosed. Mm. So it may be possible that you have 
just an operation. I don't mean to belittle that, but you know, you might only be having surgery or a combination or only chemotherapy. Very, very much case by case basis and whether or not, as we've said, you're on a trial or not. But it doesn't necessarily mean you'd be having chemo. So there's kind of no one prescribed route? No, there no. isn't. There's what we call protocols in mm. cancer treatment. So following certain protocols of chemotherapy, certain protocols of the combination of treatments, whether that's surgery, hormonal treatment, um, chemotherapy, radiotherapy. Um, so you'd be treated within that protocol, but even within that, an oncologist decides, obviously, on the basis of the patient in front of them.